Hello everyone and welcome to the predictions for the Monaco Grand Prix. This weekend, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix heads to F1 and it's very exciting because of course everyone loves the Monaco Grand Prix despite the fact there are zero overtakes in the actual race. But the qualifying is honestly, I think, the best qualifying of the season. I'm going to say that outright and it just brings so much love to the sport because that track is amazing and being there is obviously fabulous but yes boring grand prix i should say i'm not saw gun i'm ajax i'm here as a substitute we usually host this together but saw gun can't be here this week so i am taking over you can also check me out in our imola grand prix reactions because that was just filmed so yes uh welcome in a Sorgan channel. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already as we do our Monaco predictions. I have Sorgan's predictions with me right here. And yes, uh, this weekend, there hasn't been much of a talking point. I'll be honest. The only real talking point has obviously been in football. But <laughs> there's been a few things I should say. Leclerc is obviously confident this weekend that the pace of the Ferrari will be strong. He's yet to win his home Grand Prix because if you did not know, Charles Leclerc is Montagues or from Monaco. I believe it's Montagues. Uh, so yes, very exciting weekend for him. He's obviously had a lot of issues in Monaco in the past. So hopefully the Ferrari will be fast there. And Lando Norris has welcomed the nerves that Verstappen has been talking about during his last Grand Prix because obviously Last Grand Prix, if you did not see, Lando Norris was catching Verstappen at a rate of knots that was just incredible. But this Grand Prix is obviously a very technical track, very tricky. It's going to be interesting to see which cars are on top. There's obviously the different cars are situated uh, differently to basically... Some cars are better on tracks with technical corners. Some cars are better with tracks on really quick corners. So it's going to be a really interesting Grand Prix this time around. And I'm very excited indeed. Now, when we talk about predictions, we sort of have to go off qualifying for the start. And obviously, there is one person who's been king of qualifying and pretty much king of the whole season for the last two years. And that is Max Verstappen. Now, obviously, he had that incredible, incredible uh, lap time. I believe it was last year. It might have been the year before when he was going against Alonso for the race. Uh, it was definitely last year for qualifying. He was going for Q1 and he had that incredible final sector. And he's going to bring it again. Both me and Sorgan have predicted that Max Verstappen will be in P1 this race. Obviously, he's not meant to be orange there. He's not a McLaren driver. Um, but yes, we have both predicted that Max Verstappen will be Q1 for this race because why would you predict against him? He has just been superb and definitely deserves a shout for Q1. I mean, it's Max Verstappen. Usually here, I make jokes about the fact it's obvious he's going to win, but he has had some challenges over the year at Monaco and I certainly think he will as well here this race. In Q2, sorry, in P2, Sorgun has predicted Lando Norris. Now, Lando Norris is obviously on one recently. He did incredibly last race. He didn't actually qualify P2. That was his teammate. But due to Piastri's grid penalties, he managed to qualify in P3. But yes, I definitely think Lando Norris will be an amazing driver again this race. And he gave such, such a challenge to Max Verstappen in the last race and managed to very, very close to beating him, but couldn't in the end. Just ran out of laps, but I certainly think he'll be amazing here today. But I'm not going for him because I really want to go for Leclerc. As I say, it would be an amazing chance for him to do well in this race. And usually it's the opposite way around for me and Sorgan. Usually he's the one predicting Leclerc to do a bit more rubbish. I'm predict or oh, to do really good. I'm the one predicting Leclerc a bit worse. And we saw that in our last race. But it's very exciting. I I really think Leclerc is going to have a good race in Monaco because it's his home, it's his home city. He needs to do well. He really, really needs to do well. For his home country. And uh, yes, I hope so. I really, really hope that he has a good race. That means I'm obviously going to go 
the opposite way around and put Norris in Q um, P3. I'm not obviously <laughs> stupid. I think Norris is going to have an amazing race. I just don't think that McLaren is perfect for the street tracks. And I definitely think we're going to see a bit different. But we have seen the McLaren does well in the... In the Europe tracks overall, I think we saw last season they did well, and I think we'll see it this season again. But I do think they are a lot quicker on tracks with quick corners, quick uh, overtaking zones, such as Austria, such as the Great Britain track, Singapore, uh, not Singapore, uh, Silverstone side. So, yeah, I think Norris is going to be in P3, where Sorgan has gone for a massive shout and put Russell in P3. I think this is a huge, huge shout. And I congratulate him on it. Because honestly, it, it shows it shows a lot of cojones to do that. So I yeah, I'm I think it's a massive shout, but Russell in P4 is uh Sorgan's definitely is experimental pick, shall we say. Now, for my P4, I'm gonna go with Perez. And I'm surprised I haven't mentioned him before because he's very, very good on street tracks. I honestly Regretting putting him not in P2 or P1 because he's shown he has the capability of doing so. But yeah, I think Perez is going to have a good race this time around. He's obviously had some difficult qualifying sessions. Last year, he crashed into the barrier. The year before, he crashed into the barrier, but he did that when he was in P1. Last year, he did it when he was in P20. So yes, I don't think uh, I don't think that's going to happen again. I think Perez will have a good race and hopefully he proves me right. Because instead of... Perez, Sorgan's gone for Leclerc. Now, as I say, a bit of a shock that he's so far down for me on Sorgan's list. Because usually he has him up there. For example, he thought he would win last Grand Prix. But yeah, I'm a bit shocked. But I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think that is a good call. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he manages to do it. I'm going to be a bit more boring though, and my next pick is going to be Carlos Sainz. Again, I think he's very good on street checks. I think he'll get P5. I honestly think all this top five could get P1. Any of them could get P1 to P5, so it's really difficult to predict. And obviously, it means so much in Monaco, so I'm actually going to go with a tactic, and you'll see that later. But yes, I am going to put Sainz in P5. And... To finish it off, the Sorgan, he has Piastri in P5. He's obviously done very well. Did really well in the qualifying section for the last Grand Prix and managed to get fourth overall. But yes, he's in P5 for Sorgan for this Grand Prix. Now, no spoilers here. But I'm pretty much going to copy and paste this over to this one for the Grand Prix. Except there is one change. Because Sorgan has gone for the exact same grid basically being the same. And uh, I think that's a good strategy because it's a boring Grand Prix. We only tend to see overtakes because of pit stops or because of incidents. So yeah, he's gone for that and he's put uh, Piastri to overtake Leclerc, which obviously makes a lot of sense because Ferrari have uh, their fair share of bad pit stops along the the season so yeah i think that's an amazing call by Sorgan, but i think i'm going to one up him here because as i said i think that top five that i put could get anywhere in the grand prix and i agree piastri could also get anywhere so i'm going to go for a completely different top five in the race it's a big risk except for one driver because i think for verstappen is obviously going to win it's it's verstappen he's amazing he wins every race. So I'm going to put Verstappen to win because I just don't see any other way. However, I'm going to go with mixed up grid for my next spots to try and get a few points. Because as I say, I just don't know if that P5 is actually going to stick to their guns. So I've got Verstappen and Perez in P2, a Red Bull 1-2. I'm going to put Leclerc in P3, as I say, I don't think there will actually be only overtakes. But I'm basically using this as a second qualifying. Just to see if that actually comes off. I'm going to put Norris in P5. And I'm going to, again, not include Piastri. I do think he'll do well. But I just think 
the I think the Ferraris will be quick around this circuit. I hate to say. So yeah, I basically mixed up my top five there, apart from Verstappen, to try and maybe get a few more points because this grid could go anywhere. So I think that was a very good strategy from me. Next up, we have the fastest lap. Now, it's another incredibly, incredibly interesting pick from Sorgan as he's gone for Russell to get the fastest lap. And I would be tempted to agree because I do think that the Mercedes are going to pick, pick, Russell very late on like they did the last Grand Prix however I'm not going to go for Russell I'm going to go for Hamilton instead because I think Hamilton will be ahead of Russell this Grand Prix and they'll basically do the same strategy they did last time and put Hamilton out into some open air because I do think the Mercedes will get that open air yet again like they did in the last race so yeah both of us putting Mercedes drivers fastest laps both for different reasons because obviously Sorgan thinks Russell's going to stay in the third place so he won't get an extra pit stop he's just doing that out of merit so that could be an incredible shout if it happens least impressive team up next to Sorgan and he's gone with the Haas now I think that's a great shout because the Haas are obviously not as good on street circuits I think they showed their lack of pace in Australia when it comes to these technical tracks this is the first one we're seeing where it's very slow so I think I am going to agree and go Haas. Obviously, I don't try and agree because we want to get as many points as possible. But I do think the Haas are going to be the slowest this Grand Prix. Now, he's gone for least impressive driver of Hulkenberg, which is one hell of a shot because Hulkenberg has been very impressive all season. Whereas I'm going to go for a different driver this time around. And just because I think he had it all for race last time as well, I'm going for Alonso. I'm going for Alonso to have two bad weekends in a row. I think last weekend, obviously, will affect this weekend coming up. Uh, the Imola Grand Prix, he obviously had a terrible weekend. And yeah, I'm just going to I'm gonna go out there and say Alonso's going to have another terrible one. I'm very tempted to put Stroll there. But he actually proved he was pretty good last weekend. So uh, yes, I will put Alonso there instead. Most impressive team... For sort of gun goes to Mercedes, and it's a good shout. Get bear in mind they come third. If they do come third, I completely agree with him. That would be most impressive, and alongside that, most impressive driver would be Russell as well. And I'll be honest, I haven't thought about this much because I think it's a difficult one to talk about when we talk most impressive team. I have tended to go with one team all season and I'm very tempted to go with them again and that is Toro Rosso I think they are really bringing a good package here and I'm very I'm, I'm gonna go with them again I think they'll get a good uh, race again I hopefully hopefully they don't make the same um basically they made a mistake with their pit stops last time out and I think that affected Sonoda and Ricardo from getting what would have been P8 and P10 and I think they could do that this time so I'm I'm gonna put them in most impressive uh, team and Sonoda in most impressive driver. Now, the extra bold prediction for Sorgan is two plus red flags in qualifying. And obviously, that's a very, very good uh, prediction, I will say, because there's a lot of incidents in this race. And it's the first technical, uh, technical one we've seen this season. So I think that's a brilliant pick from Sorgan to go with that. Me, however... I'm not sure. I'm very tempted to go with a race restart, which is something we don't see... Well, something we see often. I'm... Because we obviously have safety cars and so on. The incidents tend to go off the track, even though Monaco is different. Oh, I'm very tempted. I'm going to go race restart. Hopefully that's a... Uh, you know what? I'll put two plus race restarts. Uh... No, no, a race restarts extra bold enough, I'll say. Obviously, if uh, if Sorgan doesn't agree with me, then uh, I'll change that to two plus race restarts. But I think if we go all the way down to Australia, I did have a uh, standing restart. There you go. Um, I did have that there, and I'll put that here as well. A standing restart this race is what I'm expecting. And that's our predictions. Obviously, I hope this Grand Prix is a lot, lot better than we've seen before because the most recent races have been quite a difficult watch. But yes, hopefully we see uh, this race 
uh, well, obviously we had a very fun re- uh, race recently in Miami. But yeah, I, I definitely hope this Grand Prix gives a lot more of an extra spice to it. And yeah, hopefully we have a good time. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I've been Ajax for Sawgun channel here. And these are our race predictions for Monaco. Thank you for watching and peace.